They pulled through a Spike episode that's actually great! Sure, we've had several that were decent, but this is the first one I can call great! Yes! A lot of people complain, including me sometimes, that Spike is a pushover. It does sometimes seem that way, what with the way he's treated by several members of the main six. While it is somewhat true, I think there's another side to it. Although Spike at your service, as much as people don't like how it portrayed Spike as uncharacteristically incompetent, it did cement something about his character that made me realize why I liked him so much. His chivalry. Spike has a sort of young child nobility to him, always being ready to help and trying to make someone's life easier without expecting anything in return. He views the main six as role models and heroes, and come on, wouldn't you be just as eager to serve and help your heroes? Also, headcanon time, I think that given his dedication to his dragon code, it seems he's trying to embody the ideals of the legendary noble dragon, the ones he likes to think dragons are like instead of the ones he's actually met. Yeah, the ones he's become acquainted with weren't too great, but to him, I don't think he views that as an excuse to not keep the myth of the noble dragon alive. So this starts off with another festival. Hey Silverquill, I think we found your next drinking game. Jeez, now I can see why party playing is an occupation. And Rarity creates a traveling puppet theater for W.C. Fields Pony, who says it's terrible for being completely unusable. Yeah, Rarity does have a tendency to pick form over function. Oops. And as a result, she descends into Drama Queen Mental Breakdown number 273. So Spike wants to help Rarity get back on her feet and travels through the Everfree Forest. Okay, hold the phone. Is the Everfree Forest dangerous or not? I can understand walking into a normal forest, you run the risk of running into wolves or cougars or bears. Oh my. But the Everfree Forest has more deadly animals in it. The worst part is that Spike told no one where he was going. Sure, he had Owlicious who could slowly deliver a message if he got into trouble. Sure, Spike can defend himself, sort of, but this seems incredibly unsafe. After searching around for a book, Spike comes across the Pony Nomicon, which is obviously evil. Seriously, this is laughably unsubtle. The spikes, the stone binding, and the fact that it's surrounded by lime green. And as we all know, everything lime green is evil. No, seriously, everything lime green is evil. So he obliviously grabs it anyway and reenacts a Jack and Daxter scene. I bet that's the prize. You won't miss that one tiny gear. Like candy from a baby. No one will ever know we were here. Then Spike brings it to Rarity, who is surprisingly not getting fat from the several tubs of ice cream she's eating. And they try the spell out. It seems to work as Rarity starts creating stuff from her imagination in an instant. Man, I wish I could do that in real life. I get these videos out a lot faster. And then again, the hard effort is what makes the product worth it, so... Yeah, maybe it's best I don't have that. Shame. Then Rarity becomes a little clingy with the book, even going as far as to give another inanimate object a name. Possessive much? And slowly her creativity becomes more and more destructive, including changing a band to a more classical one. Oh gosh, I hope they were just teleported and not gender swapped. That would be awkward! Spike eventually realizes he has to do something and eats the book, but it does nothing as the magic has bonded to Rarity. Then Spike confesses to Rarity about how he really feels about her actions, which breaks the magic off. The ending did seem a little rushed, and I kinda think it's a cop-out having Rarity not remember what happened, but whatever. What I'm more interested in is the magic. It seemed almost sentient, like it was trying to take Rarity over, which actually makes the amnesia more plausible now that I think about it. It needed the book to come into form and alter Rarity's magic, but it didn't need the book to stay. There's also the fact that it looked like it just flew away and didn't dissipate after it came out of Rarity, which is why I get the feeling it's some sort of evil spirit. It's probably not, but it's cool to think about. So then we are dropped a line about dark magic. It seems that dark magic isn't as big an issue in Equestria as a lot of people seem to think it is. At worst, Equestrians consider it a nuisance, kind of like Japan with tsunamis. Guess it's just so common, yet so easy to get rid of that they just don't take it too seriously. Sensation. 